how to upgrade the RAM in your 2017 5K iMac and save a whole bunch of money in the process. So I acquired the 2017 5K iMac, the base model, and I firmly believe that this is the best value in Mac computers that Apple offers right now. The only glaring issue is that it ships with a measly 8GB of RAM, which just isn't enough for my personal workflow. Now of course, Apple does offer a quite pricey upgrade, $600 to upgrade the base model iMac, and then you'll have to wait on that build to order option so you couldn't walk into a store and purchase that upgraded model. So I decided to take the smart route, which everyone should consider doing, and upgrade this thing myself because it's going to save you a lot of money in the end. And it's so easy to do, it's ridiculous. So the first thing you need to do is just unplug all the cables and things from your iMac, prepare a surface to lay the iMac face down. You want a soft surface, obviously, so I just put some towels down. And then just use a little object to press the button inside the housing for the power cord. That will eject the RAM slot cover and allow you to pull that little cover off. It looks like this. So once the cover is removed, just use these two little levers and press them outward like that. And this allows you to either add or remove the small outline DIMM modules. You can see I have two, the two pre-installed for gigabyte sticks. So I purchased Corsair's 32 gigabyte kit. This includes two 16 gigabyte RAM modules. These are DDR4 2400 megahertz, unbuffered, non-parity, 260 pin, single outline DIMM modules like Apple recommends. So inserting the RAM modules is super easy. Just make sure that the notch is on the left side and just press it into place like this, make sure it's secure and just do the same process to the other stick. Now you'll notice that I only purchased 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's because I just don't feel like I need 64 gigabytes right now. I can combine the 32 with the existing eight for a total of 40 gigabytes. So once installed, just press the little levers back down and secure them back into place and then reapply the cover. Just press it in like that. Reconnect all of the cables, fire up the iMac, and you're done, folks. It's that easy. So if we click the memory tab under about this Mac, you'll see 40 gigabytes installed, two four gigabyte sticks, two 16 gigabyte sticks for a total of 40 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And depending on the way you use your iMac, the difference that this makes can be huge. I use apps like Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic Pro and ScreenFlow regularly. And as you probably realize, these apps are very resource hungry and they require quite a bit of RAM. Uh, so eight gigabytes just wasn't cutting it. Now, of course, you could always decide just to go Apple's route and upgrade using their build to order options, but there are some definite caveats. First of all, the entry level model of iMac only upgrades to 32 gigabytes. That is not a hardware limitation. That is just an arbitrary limitation that Apple decided to make on their build to order process. So you can go in here, you can upgrade to up to 32 gigabytes for 600 bucks. So you can see that price difference right off the bat makes it apparent. I paid 250 for that RAM that I just put into my iMac. So $350 difference right off the bat. And if you want 64 gigabytes of RAM, you have to actually go up to the mid tier model before they allow you to even configure 64 gigabytes. And then look at the price of that 1400 bucks, folks. I could purchase two of those 32 gigabyte kits that I just installed in my iMac for just 500 bucks. So that means you would pay $900 more to do so directly from Apple. And that doesn't include the fact that you would have to go up market to the mid tier model. So ladies and gentlemen, please save your money. Don't buy memory upgrades from Apple. Get something like this right here. This is the Corsair Vengeance memory that I just placed into my iMac. 32 gigabytes, 250 bucks. You can't beat that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.